So if you followed my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've used the Aqua Provac for years. I've gone through hundreds of interiors. I've beaten the living crap out of it. I recommend it to everyone that wants to get into an entry level extractor and wants to step away from the Visa Pro Heat. I, you know, I, I love the extractor for, for what it was. Now, I never said it was the best, but I said for what it's worth, you're getting a great extractor. And it's cool because now they're adding a steamer into their product line. So there's gonna be an Aqua Pro extractor and an Aqua Pro steamer. And what's even better is that for a year, I don't know about years, but for the longest, I was like, hey, Bryant, which is the owner of the company, I was like, you, you wanna do a giveaway with your extractor? Wanna do a giveaway? Wanna give one away? And finally, he's like, hey, let's do that giveaway you've been talking about. So if you check in the description box down below, there will be a link to enter for, uh, for one person to win one of these Aqua Pro steamers. I don't know when it's launching, I don't know when the giveaway is, so just check the link down below for that for all those details. But finally, yeah, so <laughs> I'm glad he's able to, he, he's, he's happy to, to you know work with me and say, hey, yeah, we'll give one away. Uh, I'm not being paid by Brian, which is the owner of the company. I'm not like, you know, I am gonna be an affiliate for the steamer, but by no means is he like giving me money to talk good about the steamer. Whatever I say is my opinion based on my experiences with the steamer. I use it now for about a month out month and a half out in the field. Um, and this one isn't gonna be like a thorough, like I'm gonna clean the seats and whatever, whatever. This is just to give you a more high level overview, give you the, the pros and cons to it. And then I'll be releasing more videos soon on the actual application of it, just because um, it's gonna be launched relatively soon, so I wanna help them out. So again, I'm not being paid for this, I will be an affiliate, but everything I say is my own opinion. I'll, I'll tell you the good, I'll tell you the bad, I'll tell you how it compares to other things. And again, I'll be making more videos in the near future, so just keep an eye out for those. Now let's talk about the extractor. Is I've used the VX5000, I've used the uh, Pro Duo 6, I think it's called, the one I have right now, that's $1,000. The VX5000 is $1,000. Uh, a chief steamer, whatever, whatever, that was like $2,000. Not mine, but like at, at, a, at a, the friend mobile unit. Uh, so I've used a bunch of the, Muc the McCulloch 1385 steamer, which is $200. So I've used everything from the $200 range up to the $2,500 range, I think, and everything in between. So I have, I've, you know, had my fair share of at least experience with steamers. And I must say with this one, it hits the nail on the head. The nail on the head. Is that, is that hits the hell? It hits the nail. No, wait. it hits it right on the nail. How did the saying go? It hits the nail right on the head. Aha, it hits the nail right on the head with a lot of great features in this very compact size steamer. So if you come, if you uh, put it right next to the McCulloch 1385, like it looks tiny. Um, but I, and that, this, when I first opened it up, I was like, this is a tiny steamer. Like what, what can it really bring? But once I actually started using it, I was very, very surprised at the capability. So let me just go over the pros, right? Just things that I've, I've kind of witnessed. And, and I used like, I set aside my $1,000 steamer so I can specifically use this one to really get a good usage out of it. Uh, so one of my favorite ones about this one is that it has this safety feature where like literally every steamer that I've used, you can just pull the trigger and the steam comes out, right? Now the problem with that, especially if you're mobile, is that like if you place it down anywhere and you forget it's there and you, you put something heavy on it or you sit on it, it's gonna release the steam, right? And it's happened to me plenty of times, not only just like when I'm working on a vehicle, but when I'm literally driving, so like somewhere somehow that I put the, the, the wand, um, I either hit the brakes or I turn and then the, the steamer starts to release pressure. Well, it starts to shoot out steam because it's just, it's pressing against the trigger. Um, and it's, you know, especially when we're working in the vehicle, like when I'm passing it off to someone, like you want to make sure that like you're not holding the trigger because you don't want to accidentally release the pressure onto the person you're handing the steamer to, right? Um, and aside from that, like plenty of times I've like sat on it or I've put it down to not rough, but strong enough to where it hits the trigger and it releases pressure or steam. So that's not cool. But with this one, you don't have that problem because you have to first release the safety and then you can press it and then it releases the steam. I absolutely love that because so many times, like so, 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 so many times, uh, I've come close to either like steaming someone or I've, I burned my, like basically my butt once because I sat on the steamer and it just shot all the steam straight into my leg and that burned. So with this one, like I am, this is probably one of my favorite features is that there's this little safety mechanism right here that you first have to press 
in order for steam to come out. All right, next cool thing, which once I saw this, I'm like, why haven't any of the other steamers done this? Because it's like, it's, now it's like, now that I saw it, I'm like, that seems pretty like intuitive and basic. Um, but on the carpet or whatever you call this, the, tr the triangle head attachment, is, you know, most steamers, it's just like this, like it's in a fixed position to where like, no matter what you're doing, you have to adjust the entire steamer and, you know, co uh, coincidentally your body to fit whatever you're cleaning, right? So let's say you're cleaning the bottom corner of the carpeting and, you know, you have to maneuver your hand and your body to reach that area. But with this one, it actually has a swivel here. So, um, you know, it, it could stay on the floor. I'll show you later. It can stay on the ground or whatever surface you're cleaning, and all you have to do, you can still keep it, keep the head on the ground, but you can maneuver the steamer and your body in whatever other direction to make it fit whatever you're cleaning. So I know, I mean, it sounds like it's such a basic feature, but it actually has come in very, very handy when I'm cleaning door panels, like the, the fabric on the door panels or just tight areas. It helps a lot to just be, to be able to turn the steamer without turning the head so I can maneuver it in whatever position I need to to get uh, a, a better cleaning from you know wherever I am. So that is actually a really nice little useful feature on the triangle head attachment. Now, let's be honest, like I've only ever used the steamer on the max setting, right? Like I've never used it at 85%, you know, 50%. I've used it at 100% all the time. I'm sure most of you mobile detailers are gonna do the same thing. So I've only ever used it really on the max uh, setting. And one thing that, they, oh, not one thing, but this one beats the McCulloch 1385 by a long shot in terms of the water spitting out before it starts steaming. Like, you know, with the McCulloch 1385, I said it thousands of times. That always happens when you, ha you have to press the trigger a few times to get the, the, the water that's kind of, that's no longer steaming there. You see that? And then the steam comes out. You have to do that, so that's very annoying. You first have to release some of the pressure, some of the steam, because water spits out first, and then you can start steaming. So before you like, you know, steam the carpets or whatever you're gonna do, you first have to like put it to the side, pull the pull the trigger, let the water release, then the steam comes out, then you can start steaming. With this one, I haven't used it in a while. With this one, with this one, there is no water spitting out. So it beats the McCulloch 1385 by a long shot on that. Meaning like you never have to be like, oh let me let me let me put it outside the door real quick. Shoot the water out. Okay, then let me start steaming. You could always just it's always ready to rock and roll. Even if you haven't used it in a while. Please, no water spitting out. Now, going on to the next point is that for this little compact machine, I was flabbergasted at how strong the steam was coming out of. Again, this is on the max setting. Uh, I've really never, I, I've not used any of the, the smaller settings. Well, I have, but I was like, let's be real. We're all gonna use it on the max setting. Uh, but look at the steam. I mean, it is a fantastically strong steamer. Um, like, you can't say this is not strong. Like, this was surprisingly, surprisingly strong. Not bad, not bad at all. Now there's more attachments. I don't think I have them. And if I do, I'm not gonna really show you that because I mean, these two are probably the main ones we'll use for most of the steam cleaning. So I'll just stick to those. Uh, again, the steam is great. The pressure is great. Now on the, ex the, on the unit itself, like the McCulloch 1385, it has that gauge that tells you where the pressure's at. This one, it has no gauge. Now, at first I was like, hmm, like it'd be cool see to see a gauge, but the, like how I saw it, right? And again, this is before, like I have not really talked to Brian, the owner of the company. Uh, like these are my own opinions, right? So when I saw the extractor and I started using it, I was like, hmm, it doesn't have a gauge. Like it'd be kind of cool to have a gauge, right? Most other units have a gauge. But really it's like, as long as, the only thing we care about is, is the steamer ready or not, right? That's really like, can I use a steamer? Yes or no. If you see the gauge and it's supposed to pass, whatever, six PSI, and it's at four PSI, where well, you still have to wait until it heats up. So because there's no gauge, 
it doesn't really make a difference because all you're worried about is, hey, is the green light on? Can I use it? If it's not on, I can't use it. So there's no gauge, but to me, like it made no difference whatsoever. The heating up time, uh, from my experience, it was like eight to 10-ish minutes. I never put like a timer on it, so I'm not gonna give you like an exact, exact number, but like eight to 10, 11 minutes, so not that bad. Not bad at all, right? And if if you are gonna use a steamer, typically like just as a good habit, you turn on the you turn on the steamer before you actually need it. That way, when you actually need it, it's already warmed up, right? You shouldn't warm up the steamer when you need it because if you're gonna barely warm it up when you need it, then it's gonna push your time back. So always start warming it up before you actually need it. So it has a steam indicator on, meaning uh, when it, when the light turns green, you're good to go. If it's not green, you're not good to go yet, and it still has to warm up a little bit. And I thought that's like that's like that makes sense i don't need to see the gauge i just need to know is it on or is it not right because on the mcculloch on the vx on the one i have on the other one like it says you know it tells you the gauge like where it's at but hey if it hasn't passed the, the threshold of where i need it so i can start using it it's irrelevant so i actually like that there's no gauge because you just you really don't need it the next one is the uh, empty water indicator so it'll just uh, it'll come on once once um you're running low on water now this is not this is not a continuous refill, meaning you have to turn it off, refill it, turn it back on, wait for it to heat up, and then you can go again. Uh, this With the McCulloch 1385, it was always weird because when you had to refill it, you would have to turn off the machine, you could pull the trigger to release the pressure, but that would take forever. So what most of us would do was we would slowly turn the uh, cap, uh, unloosen it so steam can, can, can get out. Now the problem with that just it was just always kind of sketchy, right? Like if you were in a rush and you needed to release all that pressure, you would just, you know, take off as much as you can without blowing it off. Or sometimes you would just take everything off, let a huge amount of steam come out, and it would just kind of sketch. Like you, you know, safety-wise, you kind of push that to a side because you wanted to release the pressure. With this one, I am super impressed with how they designed the pressure release. You don't have to loosen it yourself. You just press the button and it releases the pressure from the bottom. So it makes it super convenient and easy to release all the pressure so you can take off the cap, or whatever you call it. So you can take off the cap, refill it, refill it with water, put it back on, turn it on, and you're back at it. It's nowhere near as quick as a continuous refill, duh, right? A continuous refill, you never have to turn off the machine, you can just keep on going. That's the one that we have. It's, it's, it's you can just continually refill it at a thousand dollar price point, you know, give it, you know, it, it's gonna come at a price, obviously. But with this one, with that pressure, where they just have to press the, uh, the cap, I thought that was super, super cool because compared to the McCulloch 1385, like, it'd be sometimes real, especially if you like, if you took it off too quick, like some water will shoot out, at least for me, like, unless I was just going too far with it and I just wanted, you know, I was just in a rush and wanted to get all that steam, uh, that, that, that pressure out. With this one, takes it by a long shot with the pressing of the, I always use my foot. Uh, because it is kind of hot, obviously. So I would use, use my foot to release the pressure and then I, I take it off with my hand. Now, when I opened up the box and I saw what it was packing, it looked pretty small. But once I put it to use, that's when I realized that size doesn't really matter. Because yes, it is very small and compact. And this, I don't really think any like a uh, hose length wand is really that long. But because it is small, it literally, it, it, it fits well anywhere in the interior. Uh, because like, you, like, at least the ones I've used, like I've never found like a 25 foot, you know, steamer hose. It's always like relatively short to the steamer. I'm guessing because, you know, engineering and stuff. But uh, with this one, like even though you are limited on the hose length, you can just fit it in the interior under your feet with like almost no problem because it's so tiny and it can fit like everywhere in the vehicle. So there's plenty of times where I put it underneath the like, let's say the driver's side section and like I just use it there to reach all the other areas that I needed to reach. So yes, it's small. And yes, you could say like, oh, like the length isn't like long enough and stuff, but because it's small, you can fit it anywhere you need to. And the tank itself, like to be honest, I didn't use it because we had the extractor, right? Um, I didn't use this like for the entire interior. So I, I never really like, I didn't steam all the carpeting and steam all the seats and steam all the headliner. So I couldn't give you an honest opinion on the tank size. I can just say that on cleaning like the center consoles, the door panels, 
uh, specific spots around the headliner, um, things like that, the tank worked well for me. Like, it, it, I never ran out of water. If this is your only unit in terms of like an extractor and a steamer, and you're only using it, and, you're, and you have only a steamer and no extractor, and you are using it for the entire interior, like you're shampooing with this as well, then I could see you definitely running out of water. Even if you are using a bigger unit and you are shampooing everything with just a steamer, you're just gonna naturally run out of water. So for my needs, where it was like the door panel, center console, dashboard, uh, the seatbelt buckles, uh, maybe a few stains here and there, uh, the seat rails, headliner, um, things like that, it all, I never ran out of water. Now, what about the unit in itself, right? Is it belt rugged? Can you, you know, you know, is it built to last? Is it strong? Is it like hard material? I will say that if you've seen, if you've seen my Aqua Pro uh, extractor reviews, that I said like, you can tell it's cheap material, it's cheap plastic. This one here, you can tell it's an upgraded quality of everything, right? Like it doesn't really feel flimsy, but it's definitely not like, you know, your super high grade, uh, you know, $1,000 steamer quality, right? Like the, the steamers that I've had, the VX5000, the, uh, the Duo 6 that I have, like it's like metal or like, uh, what's it called? What's the word called? Uh, it's not metal, but you know what I'm talking about, right? With this one, it's still plastic, but it's like a harder version of plastic. Um, Brian, the owner, he, he did say that it's made in a different factory where like all the components are of higher quality. So he did say like overall, like across the board, everything is better quality. So take it for like, you know, I, I mean, I don't know, but it does, it, it's not like, dang, you can tell like it's gonna survive like if I chunk it off the, the roof, but it's also not like if I drop it once or if I move it around, like it's gonna break. Now I will say the handle itself feels a bit flimsy, um, but overall, like overall rating, I'd give it like a eight out of 10 for what it is, right? Like it's not gonna be, you know, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here, but it's not cheap. It's not super strong and durable feeling. It's somewhere kind of in the middle. And for the price point, I think it's very fair for what it offers. It's definitely better than the McCulloch. I'll tell you that one right there. I've used a 1385, which is 200 bucks. Uh, I've used it for several, for a long time. I've had two units. And this one in every regard beats the McCulloch 1385, which means it beats the 13, 13, 1275, the 13, the whole line of McCulloughs, it, it, it beats it. now. This one, what's the price? This, it's gonna be priced at, I wanna say, let me just check real quick. So it's gonna be priced at $349 with free shipping, as per what the details that, that, are, that are given to me. It could change, I don't know, that's just what I, what I know as of now. So the McCullough 1385 is $200. This one is 349. Now you'll say, well, the McCulloch is cheaper, so I'm gonna go with that one. Yes, but like I said, I think I said it in the beginning of the video where you are getting more bang for your buck with the Aqua Steamer versus the McCulloch 1385. Yes, it is $150, $149 more, but I guess apples to apples, you are getting more value from 350 than you are with 200 with the 1385. I'll make a, a more thorough, before, uh, before not thorough, I'll make a more thorough uh, comparison because I think like the 1385 is like, we all know that one, right? Like that's probably like the the, the highest tiered, like non-commercial unit that mobile detailers use. And you know, McCulloch doesn't say like, when you reach out for like warranty or like something went wrong with the McCulloch, it's, it, they tell you like it's not meant for commercial use. This one is made for commercial use. It's made for mobile detailers. There is a 12 year warranty on it. Meaning if anything breaks in turn, like if you eat it out of your car and it, you know, shatters. All right, that's on you dog. But if it's like, if anything internal breaks, it is covered by 12 year warranty, 12 year. Dang, that'd be crazy. A 12 month warranty. So like th there is a lot more value that you get from 340, not 350 versus 200. And I keep on pointing that way because the McCulloch 1385 is up there collecting dust right now, which is why I keep on pointing that way. Uh, you get way more value out of this one than that one. All right, so I'm gonna end the video right here. I'm just, again, it was just to cover like the high level overview of the steamer. I'll get more, I'll make more videos of comparisons of like more practical applications in interiors and such. Now, but like, just like the uh, 1385, just like actually any steamer, I don't recommend it for wheel cleaning, for engine cleaning. Like maybe yes to like dislodge some gunk out of the engine bay, but to do a, an entire engine cleaning, no, like, I wouldn't even do that with the thousand dollar steamer that we have because it just, that's like, it's, it just, no, I just, I just, I just do not recommend that. I've recommended specifically for 
interiors or like for very specific applications on the exterior. Uh, but anything of that, like I would, I would just keep it for the interior. So let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns. Again, check the description box down below for the link to enter to win one of the steamers. You finally agreed to do a, a giveaway. So go ahead and like, you know, actually win one so you can uh, take advantage of that. Um, so on that, yeah, let me know. I'll make a video soon. But now I have to work out and my hands are like kind of frozen, not frozen, but they are a little, a little timid and my nose is probably a little red like Rudolph. So, all right, I'll see you guys on the next one.